In this video, we are going to implement a system that allows us to store credit card numbers in a database, but they will be encrypted. And not only that, but also, if we have several instances of our application in production, then what one instance encrypts, the other instance must be able to unencrypt. So they are going to share the same cryptographic keys. Let's learn how to do that. We are going to use the data protection API so that we can encrypt and unencrypt the data, as we have seen in the past. So we are here in a web API. As you can see in the program class, I already am using the data protection API. And also I already have a simple controller set up that allows me to encrypt and unencrypt credit card numbers. Let's see that. Let's see that here we have payments controller. I have this application DB contest because we're going to use Entity Framework Core. And if we go over to this application DB contest, we're going to see that we have this payments table. And in the payment entity, we have ID, credit card number, and amount. This is a simple implementation because the idea of this video is to simply see how to store this data in the database and also how to share cryptographic keys. So, with this out of the way, let's come back to Payments Controller and let's see that we have the iData Protection Provider here. We're instantiating a new data protector and we're passing, as we saw before, a purpose string that indicates what we're going to encrypt and unencrypt with this protector. Excellent. After this, we have two endpoints. The first one is a get. In this get, we're going to get all of the payments from the payments table and we're going to unprotect or unencrypt the credit card number that comes from the database, as you can see here. And if we can't do that, then we're just going to tell to the client that we cannot unencrypt that credit card number. And also we have a post. This is the other endpoint in which we receive a payment and then we encrypt that credit card number and then we store that in the database, as you can see here. Let's see that this works. Let me control F5 to run my application. Now let's come to Postman. Here we are in Postman. We have Post API Payments and we have the credit card number here and an amount sent. Let's see that we have a 200 OK. So if we go over to SQL Server, we are going to see that we have this table here and here in tables, we have this payments table, select up 1000 and we're going to see that we have our credit card number encrypted. So now let's come here to Postman one more time and let's do a get so that we can see that we indeed get back the credit card number unencrypted. Now, the test that I want to make is that I want to create a second instance of my application so that we can see if what we encrypt in one instance can be unencrypted in the other instance. But before that, if you want to learn more about how to build minimal APIs using Entity Framework Core, buy my Udemy courses today. I have a course on minimal APIs with Entity Framework Core, but I also have another choice, which is minimal APIs with Dapper, in which we use store procedures. Link with a discount to these courses in the description of this video. All right, so back to the tutorial. So what we're going to do is that we're going to create our second instance. For that, we're simply going to duplicate this project and then we're going to run both of them at the same time. So let's come here. Let me say open folder in File Explorer. I want to come up here. Let me duplicate my folder. I will just name it v2 for version 2. And let me rename the csproj. Let's say rename and v2. All right, so let's come here. Let me say right click on the solution, add existing project v2, v2. And we have the two projects here. Let me come to properties because I want to change the ports so that they are different. So let me say here nine and four. All right. Now, now, since I want to run both projects at the same time, I can come to the solution and I can say configure startup projects, multiple startup projects. And let's say here, start without debugging and also start without debugging, which means that, and let me close the console because I have another one running here. If we do control F5, we're going to see that we're going to run both projects at the same time, as you can see here, 71, 79 and 71, 98. All right, so now I can come back to Postman and I want to duplicate this. I want to say duplicate tab and say 71, 99 and then the same for the get. So duplicate tab, 71, 99. Now let's issue a get request from our second instance of the web API and let's see what we get. 
sent. And we're going to see that we have the message cannot unencrypt because this credit card was encrypted using the first instance of the web API, not the second one. And that is why we're having this error. And not only that, but if I try to encrypt a new credit card using the 7199 instance, the second instance, we're going to see that, and I will put a seven here at the end, sent. Okay, that was encrypted and stored. And if we come back here, to the second instance, we're going to see that we can unencrypt the second credit card, but not the first one. And if we go over to our first instance, to that 98 instance, we're going to see that we can unencrypt the first one, the first credit card, but not the second one, which is a huge problem because it cannot be the case that we have several instances of our application and they cannot unencrypt what the other one encrypted. That is bad, that is really, really bad, and we must fix it. And what we're going to do is that we're going to use a common storage for the cryptographic keys. Basically, the idea is that when we want to encrypt and unencrypt, the algorithms use a cryptographic key. And by default, that cryptographic key is unique per application. And this is why when we have a second application, they have two different cryptographic keys and therefore, one cannot unencrypt what the other one encrypted. So what we have to do is to have a single set of cryptographic keys that both instances of our application share. Let's see that. There are several ways. There are several places in which we can store these keys. We can store them in Azure Key Vault. We can store them in Azure Storage. We can store them in a SQL Server database, in a file, etc. In our case, to keep it simple, we're going to store the keys in a table in SQL Server using Entity Framework Core. And we're going to see that it is very easy. It only takes three steps to do that. Let's see. Let's come to here. Now, in our case, since that trick that we're doing to have two instances is to just clone our application, what I will do is that I will delete this. I will remove here. I will do what I have to do here in this instance and then I'm just going to clone it again so that I don't have to do the same steps twice. All right, so let me say here, set as a startup project. The first step to store the keys in SQL Server using Entity Framework Core is to install the following package. Right click here, manage NuGet packages. Let's go to browse and let's say Microsoft SPNet Core Data Protection Entity Framework Core. Let's install this, I accept. All right, so the second step is to come to the application DB context and implement this interface, iData Protection Key Context. Control dot, implement interface. And let me say here, I want to say here, get and set. So what we're doing here is that we're defining a new entity that is going to allow us to create a table that is going to store the cryptographic keys. As you can see here, it will be called data protection keys. All right, so now, Let's come here to the package manager console. I want to create a new migration, add migration. Let's say keys table, enter. That will create a migration. Let's say update database. And now if we go over to SQL server, we are going to see that here we have right click, refresh. We have this new table here. All right. So the third and final step is to come to the program class and actually configure that we want to persist the cryptographic keys using Entity Framework Core. So let's say here, persist keys to DB context, application DB context, and then we have to say set application name because if we don't do this, then a second instance of our application by default will not be able to unencrypt the cipher messages from other instances of the same application. So let me say here something simple as my app, for example, semicolon here. And that's actually it. With this, we're good to go. So what we're going to do is that we're going to clone again our application. So let's come here, right click on here, open folder in File Explorer. Let me come here, let me delete this old version. Let me clone it. Let me say V2 one more time. And let me say here, V2 here in the CS brush. All right, enter. All right, so let's come back here. Let me add that project again, existing project, V2, V2. All right, launch settings JSON. Let's modify the ports one more time. All right. Let's try to run our applications. Let me 
close the consoles and also let's come here solution configure set of projects and let's run both of them at the same time let's make sure they are both I start without debugging okay control f5 all right let's see that we have here this one running and this one also running excellent notice that we're querying the keys at the startup so that we can keep them in memory so that we can use them when we want to encrypt and unencrypt all right so before we do our test our final test let's come back here i want to delete the current credit cards so that we don't have any issues with those so let me delete the two rows all right now let's come back to postman and let's see that this is empty as you can see here so let me create a new credit card using the first instance as you can see okay so let me do a get with that same instance of the web api excellent and now let's go to here to the second instance and let's see that indeed we're able to unencrypt the credit card from the second instance even though the credit card was encrypted in the first instance and then again let's do the second test let me encrypt the credit card from the second instance so 71.99 sent all right okay let's see that in here from the second instance i can unencrypt both of them and in the first instance i also can unencrypt both of them so as you can see by storing the keys in a common place several instances of my application are able to encrypt and unencrypt data without any issues thank you